Hey guys, I'm up here on my roof of my house and uh, we had our first official dump of snow today. It's been a very warm winter, but we got a really good snowfall, really heavy stuff. And you can see that my solar panels are all covered in snow, so they're not really generating much power. Um, and so I want to just make a video kind of talking about, I've had the solar system for just about two years. It's been exactly 22 months. And so I've had like, you know, at least one full year of using it and another more or less partial year. Like it got set up in, I think it was February or, yeah, it didn't get, didn't kick on until March the first year. And then I had that. And then I had a whole other year of, in 2018. And so I wanted to just talk about this solar system and how I like it. And I think if I think it's really that worth it and um, yeah, take this, take from this video what you will. Um, one thing some people ask me is, hey Curtis, do you ever go up on your roof and knock the snow off your solar panels? And I did actually in the first year that I, that I got it, I did it all the time. But the thing is, it's totally not worth the effort because um, even on a day like this, that's fairly sunny, which is quite rare in the Okanagan Valley where I live uh, in the winter, you don't really get that much power because our sun is so low in the sky. Like it's right now it's about 3.30 p.m. and the sun is very low in the sky. And so my horizon essentially goes like this around this time of year. And so in the summertime, these panels, this is an 11 and a half kilowatt system. So in the summertime, these are generating up to 80 kilowatts a day, which is fantastic, which is way more energy than we need. But uh, in the wintertime, even if it was a perfectly sunny day, it would really only generate like, I think nine kilowatts or something at best. But the challenge here too, is that it's mostly cloudy for the winter for at least the three months, it's mostly cloudy. So even on a snowy day to come in here and, and waste the effort to knock the snow off to generate 10 kilowatts, that, that, that's what's that worth? 10 bucks at, at the most, it's, it's just not worth the time. So I don't bother doing it. Um, but you know, the, the greater question here is, is, the, is this um, maybe right for you? Is doing solar uh, something you're considering? Um, and there, there's a variety of factors to consider. So I just kind of tell you my context. When I set this system up, I was using my house pretty much 100% my property here, 100% for my farm. And so that gave me some really cool uh, incentives to do it because it was pretty much a clean write-off for my business. So this system is worth about $30,000 Canadian. And um, so, you know, to set that up with my business running here made pretty good economic sense because it was a write-off. And that was actually my biggest incentive to doing this. I'm a big fan of, of um, green energy and stuff like that. I have been for a long time and it always been a dream of mine to have solar on my house. Um, but you know, just, you know, to be, to be really honest is the, the tax write-offs were the biggest appeal. Actually, it wasn't, isn't necessarily, ta well, I guess it is tax. If you're writing it off that expense that comes off your income and then you're not paying tax on that income. So there was that. There was also some kind of tax credits too, like the government uh, will give you money back that they've already taken from you. I'm not a big fan of subsidies. However, since the government already takes so much from me uh, to get some of that back um, was welcome. So there was that. So there was the write-offs and then there was the tax incentives. And now let's talk about the third thing, which is how much energy does this actually save in a year? So um, I'll just kind of dub in here a, a screenshot of the last two years. And so the first year, just a little over 11,000 kilowatts generated. And then this year, we're just a little over 12,000 kilowatts generated. And if your electricity is more expensive, then you're going to have more incentive to do it. Um, unfortunately for me, my electricity isn't that expensive. And you know, one, one thing is about British Columbia, where I live, is that we are actually a pretty green province. Like we have hydroelectricity. That's that's the predominant form of electricity here by by a huge order of magnitude. And so if, you, if, you, if you're if you're really um, 
passionate about green energy um, and you live in BC, is it worth spending the money to do a solar system? Maybe not. Um, it depends on what you, you know, what you value. Um, another thing I should, I should say that is a, is a big plus for me is I like the idea of being independent. I like the idea of being a net producer over a net consumer. So that's part of the appeal to me, though there's not really much economic um, reason for it there. Um, once I explain to you how these numbers break down, but um, that was part of it too, knowing that um, if the sun is su shining, I have power no matter what's going on at the grid. I like that. I am actually looking at getting some battery systems set up here. I'm looking at that Tesla wall battery um, in that if there was a power outage that I would have power on my house. So I'm looking at that because right now this is a grid tied system. But so let's just talk about the numbers here. So yeah, I got the write off. That was great. So. In my context, this system is is, is, is worth it in my opinion um, because of that write-off and pr pr my, primarily from that write-off because if you look at the power energy I used in the first year, I only, this, this produced about 11,000 kilowatts and so that's only the equivalent. If, if your power, my power is on average 11 cents a kilowatt hour, so that's only 12, that's about $1,200 of savings. That's not very much. Um, the next year is about $1,300 of savings at 11 cents a kilowatt hour at 12,000-ish kilowatt hours being generated. So at those numbers, um, you know, in order to pay this system off, so return on investment is over, is over 10 years. So I don't really think that's actually that practical for most people. I don't think it makes sense. But again, it depends on your context and it isn't always about the money. You know, you got to think about all these other factors. I like energy independence. I had a really good write off with it. Um, and the fact that I can generate my own energy has value to me. So it isn't all about the money. And those are the things that that I, I don't regret doing this. And I'm still happy that I did it. I'm actually thinking about putting more panels up, to be honest, but putting a, a row on my green on the top of the greenhouse here that's facing the sun maybe I can do one of the racks that um, change angles so they go higher when the sun's lower and lower when the sun's higher um, but yeah that's that's pretty much it um, I mean okay here's one other thing to consider where you actually might where I actually might have saved more money on electricity but it's kind of hard to figure out um, though maybe somebody who is an expert in solar will chime in and, and, and say it the one place that you might save more than what I just demonstrated. So I said, let's say in the second year, I generated 12,000 kilowatts at 11 cents a kilowatt hour. Our billing is by the tier. So at a certain amount of kilowatt consumption, you're at 11 cents. And then at another level, you're at another, you're at like 15 cents. So if you're under, and I don't know what the numbers are, if you're under a certain one. So you could factor that in. So yes, I'm saying, okay, I've saved, uh, twelve hundred dollars in a year these are all Canadian dollars I'm talking um, it might actually be more if you look at each daily consumption and if you go over that second tier then your savings might be greater so that is something to consider there and that might make these it, that could double these numbers but let's even say it is doubled let's just say I saved two thousand dollars each year over the last two years we're still looking at, what would that be? 15 years to pay this off. So is it worth it? Again, it depends on your context. So for me, I think it was worth it because I had I had a combination of things that I was valuing. To me, energy independence, uh, supporting green energy. I had a really good write-off there. Um, and I am getting some savings on my energy. So there's four things there that were valuable to me. You know, what are they to you? That's the question to ask if you want to put solar power on your house. And um, one, another, actually another thing that's a good benefit to me here in the province of British Columbia is we have net metering. So whatever energy I put into the grid, I get back at the same rate. Some states and provinces don't have net metering, meaning that you are, you might be, you're putting energy into the grid at at low peak hours. So when people aren't using electricity, you're putting energy at the grid and you're getting five cents a kilowatt hour. And then when you're using it at nighttime or in the winter, you're buying it back at 15, 20 cents a kilowatt hour. And that's a brutal scenario. So 
if you're in that kind of scenario, you probably just want to be off grid if you're interested in this kind of thing. To be to be tied into the grid without net metering, there's no economic incentive for it. You're actually going to lose money because you're not going to get any return on your investment. So those are things to consider. I hope you guys have found that helpful and uh, we'll see you in the next video.